Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. I'm James McGowan. I'm Jessica Fast. And we are literary agents who have taken our popular blog to YouTube to discuss all things publishing. Today, we want to give some insight into how a literary agent goes about submitting a book, particularly what editors we submit to and how we make those decisions, which there's a lot that goes into that. So we have a handy dandy list. Um, but do you want to say some opening words? Yeah, I do. I always yeah. want to say something. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that often public or authors will think, you know, I need an agent to submit my book. And they don't think beyond that, which we discuss in great length in every video. But the other thing that's really important is it's not enough just to have a editor's name at a publisher. We spend a lot of time and a lot of thought goes into, you know, we know which publishers publish your genre like that, you know, and we know which editors. Now our job is to find the right editor. And that is, if you only think of an agent to submit your book, then what you want, the point is because we know which editors to submit to, not just I can send this to Putnam. Yeah, on the face level, that's what we do. We submit your book and that's what you think of, but really there's so much industry knowledge and expertise on contacts and relationships that come along with that. Um, so we have a list of about six or seven like check boxes that we we look yeah. for. And perhaps the most obvious is the genre fit. Like you said, we know which publishers and imprints are publishing which genres regularly. Um, and that's our most obvious first little checklist, right? Like we want to yeah. make sure. Go ahead. Yeah. So it's the first place we narrow down. Yeah. So, you know, if I have a list of, I mean, it, it's not this sort of thought out, but if I have a list of editors that's, you know, a hundred long, then the first thing I do is pull out all of those that fit your genre. That's okay, it's funny because you say it's not that thought out, but really for some of us it is. I have blank lists <laughs> and I have a blank list of every imprint that I would submit a picture book to. And then when I am putting a new book, I put the title at that blank list and then I delete all the people that wouldn't do it. Like for instance, Little- That Sunday. is, I had no idea. Well, well that's also one of my best I think query tips for agents. Like you can find so many of those monster lists of every agent who represents a genre. And I always suggest an author take those lists and then just start whittling them down. Is this an agent that's still doing that? Is this an agent you would want to work with? And then once you whittled it down to the list that you will query, you have a base list for next time. You can just add on new agents. Um, I feel so like I just met with the Jedi master. <laughs> I really you. Well, that is that well, that's all I was gonna say. Like it is kind of systematic in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I have, it's not like I don't have a system, mine's not that good, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's the first step. Then once we've narrowed down every editor who, rep, who is buying in your genre, we look at- it, Well, it's a case by case basis, right? So like, we'll start with each imprint, at least I would. So then I have that one imprint and then we're looking at all the people and our next thing would be interests. Mm -hmm. So just because an imprint publishes all of mystery, right? Doesn't mean that every editor is interested in your type of mystery. So if you're writing a cozy, not every editor that works in mystery suspense thriller will edit a cozy. So that's our next step, those personal right. interests. Yeah, and it could be even far more specific. Like if I'm sending, if I have three editors at that house who are doing mystery and I have a mystery, now I'm gonna look at what they like personally. And maybe one of them um, prefers historicals. Well, mine's not a historical, so I'll take that person off. Maybe one of them, you know, has um, an MSWL or we had a conversation and um, they are big sushi fans. And my book is at a sushi restaurant. Then I think, perfect, I will submit to that person. So it, it really does get specific to the things we know about the editors from the network we're doing, the conversations we're having. Um, how many times will we hear from an editor? Anything set in Pacific Northwest. I'm born in Seattle. I want to see something there. And then we have this book. And you wouldn't really know that necessarily, know that editor X at Imprint Y is born in Seattle. You wouldn't right. know that. But that's our job to know that. All those little weird things about these people that we exchange emails with every once in a while. We know those things. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's even just, not, just random conversations. Like, you know, um, sometimes I have in my signature and my email, the books I'm currently reading. 
And when somebody comments on that, I, we sometimes have this short exchange and I've learned something about them just in casual conversation that I didn't know. So yeah, those kinds of things are things we just absorb and keep and keep lists of and all of that because it matters. Yeah, for sure. Um, so our next thing is actually kind of an umbrella. So we're looking for whether that editor is a good fit for that particular author. And there are a few things that I think go into that. Um, the first being editorial style. Yeah. So every editor is different and then every author is different. And by that time we have presumably found out how that author works in revisions. And we're kind of sort of looking how we can match that. Yeah, an editorial style can mean a, diff a couple of different things for me. So it could mean how they edit. And that could be an editor who really loves to edit in the way that they dig in deep and hard and really, you know, big things to a book. Um, not every book needs that. So maybe I'm more willing to go with an editor who has a lighter touch. Mm -hmm. But another thing I look at in editorial style is the types of books that editor likes. I know certain editors taste in a way that I can have two mysteries with cats and I know the perfect cat mystery editor, but I also know that one of these books maybe is light and funny and that's this particular editor just does not like light and funny so they would not be the right person. So it's also knowing their editorial taste, which I think sort of goes hand in hand with style. Yeah. Um, but yes, that is definitely a part of the process. Yeah. So our next one, I think fits under good fit for a particular author and I'll say it, why, I'll say why, but also just a general bucket that we're checking or checklist, whatever, you understand what I'm saying, right? I do. Responsiveness. <laughs> Responsiveness is, well, it's important for the author, but it's also important for us. Exactly. Um, and I don't know if editors always know this. Um, but how responsive you are to me is an indication to me of how responsive you might be to my client. And my job is to advocate for my client. And I don't want to put any of my clients into a position where I am afraid they might feel ignored or be ignored. Yeah. So if I'm consistently trying to get in touch with you, you're not returning my calls, you're not returning my emails, you're super slow on things, you are just terrible at communicating. Um, it gives me the impression that maybe you're too busy and I'd rather have somebody who I know really is um, going to be very accessible. And, and I think just to clarify, what we mean by responsiveness isn't drop everything and respond. Well, that's wonderful. We just mean like there is a level of base communication there. If I'm emailing you, I am getting an email back, preferably within the week or, you know, some reasonable time frame. Um, on a submission, we do hear from you. If there's closes or respond buys, we'll hear from you. Doesn't necessarily mean that we send you something, we get a response that same day, the same no. hour. No, no, so, no, no. It's not ridiculous. It's just that respectful yeah yeah um the other thing that we don't have our on our list but i i somehow feel goes hand in hand with this um is is respectfulness so if you are an editor or there are editors who are constantly complaining about authors on social media or even just in exchanges i don't necessarily um want my author in a situation like that but then I also think, eh, maybe you're not going to be around that long. <laughs> Find somebody who loves their job more. So all of that does, even on a subconscious level, give me an impression of editors and who I will choose um, feel that will be the best fits for my clients. Yeah, for sure. We're establishing our own you know, network of contacts. And some editors might fall in that. Some might. Some might occasionally be in that. So yes. Yep. Um, the last one is a fun one, how hungry they are. And by hungry, we mean? Well, how much they want to build a list. Yeah. You know, so um, a good example is you are newly building a list still. I have a very established list. I would say you are hungrier than I am when it comes to reading queries. I probably don't read my queries quite as quickly. I am much more particular. Um, than I was 15 years ago when I was building a list and not just 
hungrier in the sense that I wanted more clients, but also because of that, I had more time to dedicate to things like revisions and edits and things like that than I do now. So I have a different mindset. Right. So um, it doesn't always mean I only go with the super hungry editors, but on a project by project basis and depending on the author, that will come into play sometimes. Right, if there are two editors there and we're like, they could both be really good fits, but one is more hungry for a new project, we, or hungrier for a new project, we might go for that one over the yeah. other who has a more established list that would also be interested. You know, we have multiple books out on submission. So yeah. it could be that we are sending one to one and one to the other and which book needs a hungrier editor, which one could really impress a more established editor. Those are things that we're all considering. Also, sometimes for a debut author, a debut editor, for lack of a better word, um, might be a better fit, you know, that they both sort of have the same level of energy and time and will dedicate that and can sort of grow up and build their careers together. Yeah. Which is a really cool thing compared to somebody who has a really established career and a debut author who might be building a career. So, um, you know, I have a lot of authors who um, we have built our careers together and are continuing to build our careers together um, because when they were debut authors, they took a chance on me because I was a newbie agent and they took a chance and I took a chance on them. And you know, we've built careers together, which is pretty cool. So sometimes that same thought process will go into editors. Yeah, I always love the idea of building careers, right? Because we build theirs, but they're also at the same time building us. 100%, it's all like, tied together. Yeah, and I think that's not always um, thought about, on, particularly on social media and comments about agents, whatever. Right, um, yeah, and I, I actually think that's a really good point. I mean, you know, I'm only as good as my clients. Yeah. And if I am not building careers and, you know, reputations for my clients, then I don't have one either. Yeah. So it's all, I'm really tied in to their success. <laughs> well, those are all of our little checklists. We hope they were helpful. And I think a lot of those principles can be applied to querying as well. If you are yeah. just querying and you want to take those lists and do the same thing we would do for an editor, I think you would find good success with that. So we hope it was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you back here next time. Thanks for coming, bye.